Are we going to have another, like, 400 fucking paragraph long dream sequence? Nope. Skip today. Yay! Streams of light filter in from the curtains, rousing me out of the sleep that I wanted to last forever. Blah. I have half a mind just to turn over and wrap myself tighter in my blanket, but I guess I have to wor enough to worry about right now without added being late to school on top of everything else. Let's tackle the day, I guess. I roll out from under the covers and crash to the floor with the grace of a sloth. Ow. On top of everything else still aching from yesterday, my head thumps once more, right on schedule. I really wish it would cut me a break. Just this one time. Starting from a crawl across the floor and gradually pulling myself up onto a walk if I was evolving in real time, I tug the curtains open. Huh. I look down at the garden to find it completely empty. Not a trace of a fire, the tent, or the girls. Maybe I really was dreaming last night. I mean, they couldn't really be as stupid as a camp in plain sight like that. The fire alone would be enough to, for the police to be brought down. That's one less thing for me to stress about, at least. Thank God. Right. I better not waste any more time or I'm going to miss my chance to have a proper breakfast like yesterday. Pawing at the dust around my eyes, I start for the bathroom. A nice hot shower should do wonders. I pull open the bathroom door and... Oh, boy. <laughs> Here we go. Of course yep. it's her. Why? The bathroom is occupied. What What the heck are you gawking at? Close the door! D sorry, uh, my, my bad. I slam the door back shut. My heart is an erratic mess. That was a close one. Wait a second. Something isn't adding up here. <laughs> I swing open the door again, the sight taking away my breath once more, even though I already knew what to expect. Gah! What are you doing now? You pervert. I knew it. It is Hikari. And, uh, rather underdressed Hikari at that. She's caught like a deer frozen in headlights, her entire body tensing up in a near statuesque pose. She's down to her rather extravagant underwear if you don't count the socks she was in the process of taking off. Huh, they match in everything. <laughs> really, dude? With how she's bent forward like this, my eyes can't help but gravitate to her rather ample... Kenta! Uh-huh. I'm snapped out of whatever daze I might have been in by her shrill tone. What? What was I doing again? All right, stand up, boobies. What are you doing? Shut the door, Ray. Wait. Wait, 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 wait. Sh shouldn't I be asking you what you're doing in my house? What does it look like, genius? Now go away. Her face is beet red. She's practically trembling with anger, though still frozen in place. But how am I the one at fault here? Hey now, don't you get mad at me. I don't remember ever giving you guys permission to freely use my house. Especially not the shower. Close. The. Door. Not until you. Close. The. Door. Okay, but can you just, uh... Her eyes give off a dangerous glow, the room rubbling ever so slightly with a frightening power. Uh, I guess this can wait until afterwards. If I want to keep my house intact, that is. Okay, okay, my bad. Really. Flashing an apologetic smile and laughing nervously, I bring the door to a close once more. As demonstrated last night, sometimes retreating is the best course of action. Well, after that little, uh, situation, I find myself downstairs, both of the girls present. Sayaka has the same cheerful grin as ever, while Hikari, Hikari looks like she wants to grab the nearest sharp object she can find and gut me with it. Oh, it'll be great. That's not a knife. <laughs> this is a knife. Again, that wasn't my fault. How was I supposed to know? So, uh, do you guys want to explain yourselves? 
Hello? She tilts her head, giving me a confused look. Oh, come on! How can I be the only one who finds someone, something strange with this? Well, I mean, what are you guys doing in my house? Using my things, even! Oh, it's simple. Since we've been watching over you for a while now, we notice that your parents always seem to leave really early in the morning, and that you're the only one that lives here. So, we figured it'd be fine if we just, you know, let ourselves in to borrow the shower and stuff. So, you pretty much just broke into my house. <laughs> That's an extreme way of putting it. We made sure to fix the window, you know. You did what? I quickly throw a glance about, looking for any windows inside. No trace of a break, in, at least. Jeez, what did they do? Throw a brick through one? I thought people who knew magic were supposed to be more subtle. See, it's all good. She tries her best to reassure me with her limitless optimism, her hands on her hips with a blandened smile. I can't say I mirror her enthusiasm, though. I bring a palm to my forehead, headache beginning to set in. And for once, I know the cause of this one. Is this really necessary? Can't you guys, like, magic yourselves clean or whatever? Ellipsis. I get cold stares from the both of them. Really, because, uh, Sayakas looks like a vapid, empty stare. I said the wrong thing again, didn't I? Kenta, our magic isn't just some convenient tool that we use so carelessly in our everyday lives. Hikari finally speaks up again, having, getting, having gotten over her mini-sulk. It takes a lot of energy just to do something as simple as fly. And we always need to make sure we have enough energy in reserve in case of a surprise attack like last night. Do you really think it'd be a smart idea to waste that precious energy on something that could be done with so easily with an actual shower? Fair point. But what I'm getting out of this is... So what you're saying is you could magically clean yourselves. Her eyes narrow. She takes in a deep breath, her cheeks puffing out dangerously. Why do I suddenly fear for my ears? You're an idiot. She sighs instead, the air escaping her in one long, drawn-out breath of defeat. <sighs> my eardrums are safe for another day. Phew. I catch a glance at the clock on the wall. All this drama has really eaten into my free time before school. If I don't start breakfast now, there'll be no way I'll make it in time. You guys uh, do whatever then, I don't care. I'm just gonna go make some food. I stop for the kitchen, but Sayaka cuts me off, standing in front of me. Sliding in front of you. Yeah. She actually did slide in from the side there. Yes, yes she did. Her eyes are almost sparkling as she leads forward. Oh, you don't have to worry about that. Let us make breakfast instead. Consider it our way of saying sorry for this little mess. Right, Hikari? She pulls Hikari by the arm. Well, what? I didn't agree to. Right, Hikari? She tightens her grip on Hikari's arm, a deadly edge behind her otherwise cheerful words. Ah, okay. Hmm. Letting them cook. I'm not so sure. Yeah, I'm sure that didn't make a lot of noise. Yeah, whatever. Well, Bringing attention to it. Whatever. Uh, my choice would be... Man, what's the worst that could happen? Do it. I don't see the harm in it, I suppose. She seems to mean well, and it would be nice to be taken easy after all this stress. Uh, sure. Go for it. Psyche beams, making me feel confident in my choice. Ah. Uh, think. You won't regret this. You just sit back and watch something amazing whipped up for you in the flash. With that, she spins on her heel and waltzes into the kitchen, dragging along with her a very reluctant Hikari. I take a seat in the connected dining room and ease myself into a chair. This'll be fine. 
Right? It starts off well enough, anyway. I hear plates and utensils clatter about with cupboard doors battering along. Do you even know what you're making? We'll worry about that later. Now, we'll put some, some of this stuff in too. I'll pretend I didn't... Yeah. <laughs> I'll pretend I didn't hear that. You grabbed some of my Australian. That's weird. I want weird. British. Shut up. <laughs> the frantic chopping of vegetables sounds out from behind me, mixed with Hikari's panicked yelps. Ugh. Watch where you're swinging that thing. You're gonna take my head off. It's fine. Well, are you sure that goes with that? Sure it does. I have creative eye for these things. Is it? Is it supposed to be so green? Uh. Yes! So, I would just put it on, like this. I hear the unsettling whoosh of the flames. Just how high are they putting it on? Huh. What do you think this stuff is? I have no idea. Oh well, in it goes anyway! We have made a horrible mistake. <laughs> Ellipsis. Things go silent in the kitchen. I can't tell if that's good or bad. I'm too scared to look. Is, is this really okay? I think it's alive. Yes. It's how it's supposed to. It's just twitching. <laughs> Something explodes in the kitchen. Thick plumes of acrid smoke waft into the waft into the dining space. Waft? Shut up. Huh. Boy, yeah. I think it's gonna spread. Oh God. How do I do that? Well, I don't know. Just draw this. Boom. The roar of flames. I can see the flickering of amber in my peripheral vision. Huh. No. That made it worse. Uh, how about this? Maybe. It might have worked. Not. No more magic, okay? This time it'll work for. No more magic! Well, I didn't know what else to do, then! Hell! <laughs> You're getting it everywhere! I hear water splash. A good deal of it. Like an entire bucket's worth of the stuff. Is it... dead? Hell, hell! I think so! And look, the food is done! I really don't think that's... Food. I said the food is done! Apparently, uh, done. <laughs> oh, wait, no. <laughs> Apparently done, uh, cooking, the pair enter the dining space. Sayaka has a plate in hand, a good amount of steam, or smoke, drifting from it. I hope you're hungry, Kenta. We really went all out to make this, you know. She puts a plate before me, a sincere smile on her face. I... I guess she really gave it her all, but this cannot be called food. Uh, oh. It's, uh. Charred burnt crisp remains of what might have been food at some point sit on the plate. It feels like it might be hazardous to even breathe in this stuff. I can see Hikari looking further back, clearly ashamed of whatever substance they created. I guess this is my fault for letting them anywhere near the kitchen. I should take responsibility and... Eat it. Eat it. Eat it. Eat it. Don't be a pussy. I have no choice, do I? I don't want to make her feel bad after she worked so hard to create... Whatever this is. Uh, uh... Oh god, I'm gonna die. Here I go, then. I'll give the substance a poke. It crumbles into a fine powder at the slightest touch. Okay. I'm sure even though it looks absolutely terrifying, it can't be that bad. Maybe there's something good under all these layers of... burnt stuff. I'll scoop up as much as I can that doesn't crumble away from my hold and force it into my mouth despite all my instincts screaming at me not to. It's... it's... Well, is it amazing or what? Sayaka leans in expectantly as I swallow it down. I think this must be what charcoal tastes like. I fight back the urge to choke and give her a smile and a nod. Uh, yeah. oh. uh. 
Really? Yay! I knew it! You should let us cook for you every morning! Oh god, no. Oh god. What have I done? And I still have an entire plate left of this stuff. These girls are clearly the real danger to my health and well-being right now. Breakfast soon comes to a close, with perhaps a more lively start to the morning than I'm generally used to. As much as a headache as they be, it was actually sort of nice not to be completely alone in the morning. I wasn't about to tell them that, though, or I'd only encourage their almost criminal behavior in just waltzing into my house like that. I'm gonna keep doing that anyway. I head out for school, my two bodyguards naturally at my side. I'm almost sort of getting used to this. Yeah, It's been a day! Yeah, right? Fucking Jesus. I don't know if that's a good or a bad thing. I don't think you know what you're thinking about, dude. The journey goes to school goes by peacefully, not a monster in sight. Though I can't help but shake the feeling that someone, something, is watching me. Uh, maybe I'm just getting a little paranoid after, you know, two attempts on my life have been made already. I'm sure it's all in my head. Mm-hmm. Yep. I arrive at school with time to spare. Huh. That's a first. Sayaka and Hikari keep close to my side. So very close. Oh, yeah. I practically feel the stare of my classmates, their looks ranging from resentfulness to jealous. Fuck that guy. <laughs> I can't imagine what they must think of this whole situation. Uh, hey, look, guys. Hello? What's up? D do you really have to stay so close to me? Don't stand. I appreciate what you're doing and all, stand. but I think I'll be Don't fine at school. So close to me. But what if... As long as you're close by, I should be fine, right? And I think it'd be hard for a monster to get this close to me in class without at least causing some sort of commotion beforehand. Hikari... Uh, Hikari falls silent. She narrows her eyes into a glare and folds her arms together, tossing her head to the side. Fine. Whatever. She storms over to her desk and drops onto the chair, her eyes straight forward, leaving me and Sayaka together. Uh, did I upset her? Ah, don't worry. She's always like this. Give it time and she'll be back to a le less grumpy herself. She only has your safety in mind and is just worried about what you might happen if she has to leave you. Heck, if I had it my way, we wouldn't even let you go to school. <laughs> We just keep you locked up in a nice room until this all blows over. I don't think she realizes how scary that sounded, coupled with her usual grin. <laughs> and brandishing you a know, knife slowly. being locked up in a room with two girls is obviously horrifying. You're right, though. Maybe we have been suffocating you a bit too much. I think we can afford to at least ease up during school. Thank you. I let out a sigh. They're finally starting to listen to reason, if only a little. The bell sounds, signifying the start of class. I pass by a disgruntled Hikari on my way to the desk. She doesn't even look my way. Bitch. <laughs> the morning classes pass by in the blink of an eye, the lunch break soon arriving. I stand up and let out a yawn, only to find I'm not alone. Come on, guys. We talked about this. As if the conversation this morning had never happened, I find both my guardians standing around me, oblivious to my irritation. What's up, Kenta? Aren't we going with to go get lunch now? I'm going to get my own lunch. You guys don't need to be glued to my side. Go and do your own things or whatever. But what are we supposed to... I don't know. Something. Anything. I feel like you two have been pretty much attached to me since we first met you yesterday. Since I first met you. Blah, 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 blah. Some breathing room would be nice. I really am grateful that they're here. Otherwise, I might have met a grisly end yesterday. But this is borderline stalking. I'm not even going to bring up how they camped outside and then proceeded to break into my house. Oh, okay then. I get you. Ikari understands too, I think. Heh. <laughs> Come on, Hikari! It might be fun to explore the school for a bit and see what it has to offer. 
We've never really had the chance to attend one before all, after all. She's never been to school? Bitch, what? Just where do these two come from? Are you serious right now? You keep repeating the same bullshit, but you know they're like magic from space or some bullshit. Probably. The more I talk to her, the more she makes herself sound like an alien. Wow, I called it. Alright then, Kenta. Really hot aliens. We'll go down and do our thing for a bit. Just yell if you need us. And try not to die! And like that, she marches off, humming a happy tune. Hikari follows in her wake, but not before giving me one last assy look. I can almost feel my shoulders begin to frost. Burr. Okay. Well, I did it. I somehow convinced them to give me some peace. For the time being, anyway. Ellipsis, but now what? First and foremost, I should probably try not to forget about lunch again. Otherwise, I might just keel over and have finished the job for whatever dark forces that are lurking out there. I head to the cafeteria. The cafeteria is as you would expect during lunchtime. Completely packed! <laughs> yeah! Completely packed! It's just full of all these fucking invisible people. Throngs of student have taken up. <laughs> They're all invisible. The school is for invisible people. Shut it's, up. It's a school for ghosts. <laughs> Throngs of students take up what little walking space might have existed between the tables, equally as populated. I stand my ground and gradually work my way past the crashing waves of students that impede my path. Of course, getting food would never be so simple. Eventually, I work my way to the front of the line and approach the counter. Naturally, after all the students before me, there was very little in the way of choice. I guess it's either the sandwich or the other sandwich, neither of which seem amazingly appetizing. Ah, whatever. Anything will do after how much food I've missed out on. Cheap, bland sandwich in hand, I go look at the tables. Like before, they're all pretty packed. Though, I do see one fairly empty table at the far end, with a familiar someone happily digging away at their lunch. Even from the distance, I can tell it's Sayaka, her vibrant brown hair instantly distinguishable from everyone else's. I don't even see Hikari anywhere in sight. They must have decided to do their own thing for the break. I guess if I want to sit down here to eat, Sayaka's table is the only choice, but I, do I really want to eat here? It's so noisy, I can hardly even think. She hasn't noticed me either, either completely absorbed in the demolition of her food. Maybe I can slip away to the roof, where no doubt it'll be more peaceful. Alright, so do you want to head for the roof and most likely run it's into Hikari, Hikari? Or do you want to go to Saika's? I don't know. I'll leave this one completely up to you. I chose the last couple. Hang on. I got an idea. What are you doing? I'm getting something. Alright. This, this makes for great radio, by the way. Shut up. I got dice. So, what we're gonna do is, uh... Do not roll that on the table. Yes, we are. With the it's fucking so, mic? It's so... The viewers know, all uh, three of them, that we rolled this dice. Okay, anyway, uh... Know. One... I guess, yeah. Evens will be Sayaka. Odds will be Hikari. We rolled a... <laughs> zero? Zero. Let's try it again. <laughs> Alright. Sayaka it is. Uh, ah, fuck it. Do Hikari. Okay. <laughs> I don't want to talk so much. Okay. I'm talking so much. The roof it is. The roof. The roof. The roof is on fire. If a new character is introduced, I'll do that one. <laughs> it's just too noisy here, and I get the feeling sitting with Sayaka will only make things worse. I sneak past her and head for the stairwell. Though it wasn't exactly difficult with how into her food she was. The higher I scale the stairs, the more quiet my surroundings become, until eventually the bustling racket of the students softens to a dull mumble below. Ah, uh, peace at last. And blind in whiteness. Oh look, the familiar fucking windmills. I emerge out onto the rooftop. A gentle breeze graces my face as the sun shines high in a near cloudless sky. It's perfect out here. Only... It seems I wasn't the only one who decided to come up here. Hikara stands at the edge of the rooftop, facing outwards as she peers down at the countless people. Given how intently she seems to be analyzing them, I can only guess that she's keeping guard. I have to admire her dedication towards this whole thing. 
I actually do feel safe knowing she's this serious about it all. She's so absorbed in what she's doing, I don't even think she's noticed me yet. Making no real effort to conceal myself, I close up right behind her. Still nothing. She's miles away. And you're gonna get your ass punched. I reach out and give a gentle tap on her shoulder. Yo! Wah! She gives a jumps a good several feet into the air at my touch and lets out an ear-piercing scream. A bit of an overreaction, maybe? Or am I just that scary? Her hand to her chest, as if to keep her heart from breaking free, she spins around to face me. Her stern expression softens a little as she realizes it's me, but only a little. She still seems pretty mad. Oh, Kenta, it's just you. Don't scare me like that. You're lucky I don't frazzle you on the spot. I scrub at the back of my head with a grin. I really did spook her. Uh, my bad. But you seem miles away. Keeping guard? Huh? Her, her eyes flicker back to where she was, watching for just a moment. Yes. Even though the school itself has been peaceful so far, you never know when an enemy might strike. Thanks. I, uh, appreciate it. It's... It's no problem. I'm doing it for the safety of the entire school, you know. Not just for you. Her face goes an interesting shade of pink, just like her hair. It doesn't take much to fluster her, does it? Uh, right, right. I get it. Because, while well, Sakura and I have the decency- Sayaka! I don't care! I really don't bloody care! I have the decency to at least conceal our powers in front of normal people. I can't say that the shadows would do the same. It's already bad enough that they tried to attack you in broad daylight. I just don't get it at all. It goes against everything we know about them. She sighs dramatically and turns to her to resume watch over the school. I open my mouth to maybe say something to her, but a low rumbling sound cuts me short. Hikari? Uh, yeah? She answers without turning around, her ears clearly burning. It wasn't difficult to discern what that sound was, given that I saw no sign of any lunch out here at all. Uh, have you, uh, not had lunch yet? Dot dot dot. Silence. I think I hit the nail on the head. It's not my fault. That cafeteria is just so noisy and filthy that I couldn't stand another moment in it. I know how Saki is willing to seat down there. I have more important things to do anyway. Are you really going to be able to fight on an empty stomach? Of course. Who do you think? Ah. <sighs> uh, okay. I might be a little hungry. But I'm not going back down into that cesspit. Elitist bitch. Yeesh! I know that place can get a pretty packed sometimes, but she's making it out to be something far worse. She really can't deal with crowds, I guess. I unwrap the sandwich I'd almost forgotten about somehow and take a bite out of it, not wanting to forget about my lunch completely. Being an asshole eating in front of the hungry right? chick. <laughs> Hikari watches me intently as I take several more bites, her eyes flickering to the sandwich every now and again. Are you gonna share? I can practically see the hunger in her eyes. I stop mid bite and offer my si and offer the sandwich her way, since I'm beginning to feel terrible for eating in front of her. Glad you thought of that before you started just chowing down. Right? And I think if I don't, she might just snatch it out of my hands at any moment anyway. Do you, uh, uh, want some? I can split it if you want. Her mouth hangs open and her brow furrows in concentration as if to seriously consider it. I swear she's almost drooling at this point. She comes to her decision with an abrupt huh and turns her head to the side, her hair whipping along with it. I should have expected that. D don't be ridiculous. What would I want something you've already slobbered all over? I'd rather starve than... than... <laughs> her stomach beckons for the food. <sighs> okay, fine. Maybe... Maybe just a little. I break off half before she snatches it away with reluctance. 
Thank you. I suppose. I don't think she's used to saying something like that. We're finally making progress. I can't help but smile. Wipe that disgusting grin off your face. I don't know what you're thinking about, but I'm sure it's something indecent. She says with a snarl before she violently rips a chunk off the sandwich away with her teeth. I already saw you half naked. What the fuck are you talking about? You think a, you eating a sandwich is gonna get me off? They could. Good? It's okay. Not the best I've had, but certainly not the worst. Why, back at the academy, I... She stops herself, her eyes widening some. I think she almost let slip something there. I really wish they weren't so secretive about all this stuff. The, uh, academy, huh? It's nothing. But I'm pretty sure I heard... You heard nothing. Yikes. Despite her small frame, whenever she uses that commanding voice of hers, I feel about the size of a mouse before her. I guess it's no use in pushing her for more information, unless I want to end up like that monster from before. Uh, okay, okay. I didn't hear anything. It must have been the wind or something. She sighs as she gives her hair a toss, the anger leaving her. We're not withholding information just because, just to be all mysterious, you know. Could have fooled me. It's just easier this way. There's no point dragging you into this mess if you can't, if we can't help it. It's not a lie if I'd wish it on anyone. Her expression darkens, yet her mouth still works. The majority of her half of the sandwich already gone. I'm not even sure if she realizes she's eating it at this moment. She spends a good moment or two debating something in her head before she finally looks up at me with serious eyes. Kenta, what would you do if you were... A group of chatted students emerge out onto the roof from the stairs, lunches in hand, those motherfuckers. Ikari clamps up at the side of them and turns her back to guard post. Ugh. Never mind. It isn't important. Heh, <laughs> if you say so. It sure looked important, since I don't think I've ever seen her give me that serious look before. Just my luck that all the times people would choose to eat here, it would have to be now. An semblance of a conversation we may have had before is well and truly dashed. She seems a lot more reserved in the presence of others. Plus, I guess what we were discussing wasn't exactly appropriate for their ears. The sandwich really was nice, by the way. Huh? I didn't catch that. N n nothing. <laughs>